Welcome back to Weld.com. I'm Man Cub. Today we're going to be working on the grill. Again. Today's episode four, and we got a lot of work to do. So let's get to it. I don't know what I'm supposed to say next. All right, I got, I got it from here. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to clean up the edges here, weld these seams out, blend them. I'm going to, I need to set the, uh, the door in the frame, and then I'm going to set the uh, little air vent to where it'll open and close. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to cut a chipping hammer. I'm going to weld a quarter 20 bolt on the, uh, the end of that. And I'm going to run it through the back side of this so you just be able to twist the handle, slide it back and forth, and then kind of lock it in place. You guys have probably seen a lot of grinding in this series, so we're just going to skip to it, fast forward, and uh, we'll be back. No, 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 sir. <laughs> I'm out of here with that. All right, we just welded these uh, pieces of round rod in here, and because they're a round shape, this is flat. We use 3 8 bar and 12 gauge plate. They're going to retain this vent in here, so we'll be able to open and close vent completely both of these one's opposite from the other so one will move from left to right the other right to left vice versa and they won't they won't pop out so this round rod's actually going to retain it in there and allow it to slide very similar to a track what I'm going to do on the front is I'm going to modify a chipping hammer to bolt right through here and I'll put a captured nut or a welded nut on the back of this piece that way we can kind of Loosen it up and tighten it and move it back and forth uh, to kind of allow for airflow or restrict airflow at certain times depending on how Sam wants to cook on the grill. What I'm going to do now is just weld up these outside corners and then I'll blend those into a radius so you get a nice clean appeal and then we'll probably go ahead and mount these directly on the grill. So I'm going to do a little bit more build up than what I need that way I can take it back down where it'll look good overall. Welding vertical down I'm not worried about penetration I just want to weld this seam Get that corner in tight, and then we'll blend grind it out. Let's try this again with the uh, workpiece clamp on the right table. It works much better. I'm gonna let this cool because if I don't, and I try to hit that with the, uh, the zerk wheel right off the bat, a lot of times you end up melt the glue, burning the pad, and uh, destroy your your grinding wheel. Gonna get like a rough cleaning on it here and then I'm gonna hit it with another pad that'll get it ready and prepped for paint that way we can smooth everything out a little bit more. Alright, so taking regular cheap chipping hammer you typically find around your shop, cut it off taking a stainless steel quarter 20 nut and bolt and I'm going to weld that right to here. Then once I'm done, I'm going to use a porta band and I'm going to cut the head off the bolt. I put the nut on here because that way if I destroy any threads with the porta band when I go ahead and take that nut off, it's going to true them threads back up. I'll be able to clean them off with a, a little file if I need to. I don't think I will. This nut is going to be welded to the back side of this, so I'm going to call it the draft door or the air vent door. I'm gonna weld the nut to the back of there. That way I can just twist the chipping hammer handle back and forth, it'll kind of snug it up or loosen it, and then I'll be able to, from the opposite side, open and close this, uh, this draft door on here. So pretty simple, uh, nothing too complicated about it. Hey Mike! Yeah, what's up? Hey, I got these logos, do you think um, inside or outside on the doors, or maybe we put four of them in here? But then I'm thinking that's where the handles are going to go. It's your call, big man. <sighs> we call Sam. 
That way we can't be wrong. Sam, what's up? I got, I got stuck at the restaurant. Can I, can I, uh, I just need to do one thing and then go work to what? Yeah, that, that'll work. Like yeah. You guys got me so excited about that. Thing. Oh, you have, look at this thing, man. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set these doors flush to the top and the outside. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and mount the hinges. So I'm just using these clamps to get everything in place. And then uh, I've got some little barrel hinges that are going to go on the outsides. And then uh, that's exactly that's how they'll mount. All right, so I'm going to mount these hinges. I'm just going to go one inch up one inch down we're gonna keep it simple now the way these hinges work is we'll set these dead center and i'm going to weld one hinge up against this can and one hinge against the door if you weld both sides of it you'll never be able to open it additionally i'm going to mount them to where both of these nipples here are facing up that way we can swing the door out and take it off if we ever need to so i'm just going to run this hinge right up against that edge and I'll put a tack on the I'll tack on the back tack on the front I'm gonna drop down one inch up here same thing I'll mount that right there one inch down weld on one side weld on the other once I get all four hinges in I'm gonna check the doors if we're good I'm gonna weld them out about time for a new sharpie and then this one will be mounted just like this one inch down. I'll go lay the other side out. Another thing you want to make sure you're not gonna you're not doing when you put these on, you want to make sure to stay away from the center part so you don't weld that together. If you weld that, the hinges won't work at all. So while Jason's finishing up the doors, I already cut out my frame because I'm building the cart here. I'm going to tack it together, fit it up, make sure everything's square, double check it, always double check your work. Then we're going to decide where our measurement's at for the legs, how tall we want the uh, barbecue. I'm going to go ahead and get the mill scale off and uh, the rust, that's about it guys. All right, guys, we got the frame uh, welded out. That was pretty fun and exciting. So we're going to put a, a tube here, a support tube here, and a support tube here. So i got to cut them. So they're going to be uh, two inches less, or four inches less than two feet. So it'd be uh, 20 inches. So I need two 20 inches right here. So we're going to go ahead and cut them and get them cleaned up, get the rust off. So let's go ahead and get it, guys. Well, we like kind of pre-ordered this tube like two or three months ahead of time. And yeah, I sat outside in the dock for a while. So we got this square here, four foot, 40 inches, 48 inches by 24. So I'm taking four, 48 divided by three because one, two, three areas. That'll give me my center of my tubes. So I'm gonna go 16, 16 by 16. Then I'm gonna go two inches, or I mean one inch because it's a two inch tube. Mark my center there. That I already have a crow foot with a line mark, match that up, match that up, boom, boom, tack it, you're done. Fast, that's fast, and you move on, weld your other side and weld this side. Then you get the big man, Jason, to give you more instructions to do. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all No cheerful ages. banter. Ah. All right, guys, we got the frame all welded out, support's in. The next thing we gotta do is put the legs on here. So, Jason, what's the lengths you want to make on these legs? 12 and 5 16. All right, so the overall height to the top of the cooking surface at its lowest point is going to be 36 inches. The whole, the, uh, this part right here measures 12 and 5 16. You got two inches here. The wheels are going to be four, four inches tall from yep. the bottom of the wheel to the top of the mount, right? Yep. So let's run, let's run some numbers here. All right, so the overall height is going to be 36 inches. 
uh, minus the, the depth of the, the burn pit that we already have, which is 12 and 5 sixteenths. Okay, that gives us 23 and 11 sixteenths. We subtract, we know the overall height of the wheels are 4 inches. That gives us 19 and 11 sixteenths minus 2 inch square tube, 17 and 11 sixteenths. So four legs at 17 and 11 sixteenths. Cool, man. All right. Break. All right, so right now I'm just going to build some little tabs that are going to go on the inside of the grill so that we'll have uh, locking handles on the inside. Uh, I'm just going to build these two by two. I'm going to put a half inch radius in here. That way there's no sharp edges on the inside. Okay, so right here I put a little 3 16 chamfer because it's going to go, it's going to sit right up in that, that square tube frame and I've got a little weld in there. So I just notched out the corner of it. And then this part right here is radius. That way if anybody ever puts their hands in there to do anything, there's no sharp edges that they're going to catch wrists or clothing are on. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this because I need two of them. Put that right there and we're good to go. Alright, so what I did is I just took these little, uh, I have these magnetic squares on the back here. And I'm just flushing these little squares that we just made over there on the, uh, the queaky table. Getting them in there getting them flushed up and then I'll go ahead and tack them up and then I'll just put a couple of little stitch welds on the back and these are gonna be like the locking tabs for when the door swings in. It'll, it'll give me something to kind of hook into with the, uh, the handle when we put it in. All right, so you may have noticed we have handles for the vents but we don't have any handles to latch and close the door. So that's exactly what we're doing here now. Took another uh, couple of chipping hammers, cut the heads off as far back as I could. And I've spaced these, uh, drilled these washers out and I've spaced them out far enough to where your hand will be able to get through there when these are up against the door. So this is basically going to stop it from going too far in. And on the back side, we're going to put some other stuff to be able to, to build a latch on here. But for right now, I've got these washers on here. I'm going to just tack these in place. Uh, stainless steel washers, um, steel handles. Uh, we're just going to put a couple tacks on here just to hold them in place. Right here, I just have some one by two squares, radius the corners and then pop the hole right in the middle. The, having access to the plasma cutter saves a lot of time because I don't have to cut these out by hand and I don't have to drill holes. So these are essentially gonna be the ends of my handles that's gonna flip up side to side on the inside of the grill that's gonna latch to the back side of that two by two that we cut out earlier. Okay, so I've got these two pieces right here. What I'm going to do is just set them in an L shape because one's going to represent the piece vertically, this one's going to represent it horizontally. And I'm just trying to find out exactly where I need to locate these in relation to my handle. So I want to make sure that this is flush on the bottom here and that this one is flush vertically. Once I have both of those set, I'm just going to clamp the horizontal one in place. Just, I need to square that up just a skosh. There we go. Now when I rotate this, it'll be in this position. It'll clear the clip here. When I swing it back close, we'll rotate it. It'll be in this position, thus locking the door. So now I need to figure out my hole placement. I've already done it on this side, and what I did is I just through hold it when I had my tab mounted in there with the vice grips. I just through drilled it with the appropriate size drill bit. That told me exactly where I need to put this handle, so I'll be able to lock that in place. But I kind of jumped the gun, got a little overzealous, got excited uh, seeing this thing come together, and I welded my washer on here already. So aside from breaking the tacks, I could do the same thing on this side, but I want to make sure that both of these are exactly the same height and width in so that it's symmetrical and aesthetic and appealing to the eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure to the center of my handle. So I have three and an eighth right here. So I'm just going to come down three and an eighth. And then I'm going to come in inch and 15 sixteenths. That's where I'll, I'll go ahead and hit that with a center punch. I'll go ahead and drill that out to the, the same diameter as my handle here. And I'll be able to mount both handles. I already have a washer on one side. I'll put a washer on the other side put a couple spot welds on there and then once I close the door should go right through this hole here and then I'll spot weld it on the back and then everything will stay together and uh, the lock should function properly. 
All right, so I'm gonna drill this out with a pilot bit before I switch over to a uni bit or a cone bit, step bit, call it a uni bit, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the final drillings with this. Line that right up on that center punch. And then I'll switch over to this step bit. It's kind of a funky diameter. Here we go. Like a glove. So now what I'll do, is take those pliers off and I'll just put a couple little spot welds on there. We should be good to go. So I'm just gonna put this washer on here, clamp it on. I'm just gonna, you know, I don't want it on there like super, super tight. And I'm just gonna put a couple spot welds on here. I just want it to hold it in place. Okay, there we go. So I just wanted a little bit of that friction on there. It's not too loose, not too tight. It's just right. It's like Goldilocks. And make sure this is straight up and down. I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna hold this tight. I'm gonna go to the back side. And I'll put a couple tacks on that tab and I should be able to twist it and open it right up. If not, I can always take the grinder and just clean that, maybe radius that corner up a little bit and it'll fit. We're, we're putting everything in here, kind of building it to fit. So it's a custom one-off, custom with a K. No two are gonna be alike. All right, so I'm just gonna put a couple tacks where that round rod of that chip and hammer meets this plate that we put in here. All right, got one tack in there. I'm gonna go ahead and break the clamp free, see if she works. Oh. Come and knock on my door. We are waiting for you. That fits, it ships. So here's what we did. We went ahead and uh, designed this sprocket. This is actually what's going to allow us to raise and lower and hold in position our cooking rack. So as we turn the wheel, or as Sam turns the wheel, we'll design a handle later on that's gonna lock into place so that the, uh, the trays will stay nice and even exactly where he wants them. And then once, uh, once he wants to lower it again, that same handle, you just lift up on the handle, crank the wheel down, and you can lower the basket or the uh, the cooking trays. Right, so I went ahead and built this handle here. We're gonna cut this out of 3 8 plate. This is gonna be a test run, and if it works, it's gonna it's gonna be final. It's gonna go on the grill. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of them out, see if it'll work over there, see if it's kind of ergonomically feels good, and then uh, just make sure it kind of aesthetically looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this out do a test fit, if everything's going good, I'll come back over here and I'll cut out a second one. If it's not, back to the drawing board and we'll revise it. All right, so all I have to do now is I'm gonna mount a bolt or mount this to the bolt here. The weight of the handle should keep this engaged and still allow this to move freely. And then it'll just lock into place whenever they get it set exactly where they want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one out. We'll uh, mount them and drill them, get all that good stuff taken care of. Um, uh, keep plugging along. So right now I've got, I came down eight and three quarters of an inch because that's about where I determined this is going to be a good fit right in there. And then I just centered that pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a, or centered that tube. I'm going to hit it with a center punch through hole it and then I'll go ahead and mount this. I'm gonna get everything mounted and then before we go to paint it, we'll probably start taking the uh, mechanical fasteners off piece by piece and then that way we can get everything painted and uh, be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and use these fireball squares to get the legs tacked on. Uh, these things, you guys have seen them throughout the video, they're making life a hell of a lot easier. Uh, just makes things a lot simpler, a lot quicker. So instead of squaring up each side, you know, as long as you know that the, the tools that you're using are true, 90 degrees, you shouldn't have a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of walk you through how to set up the first one. Okay, so we 
just set set the square tube up there. Doesn't have to be perfect just yet. Just hold it flush up against the fireball square. All right, so we just clamp the uh, the fireball mega square up against there. We have another one over here. Just make life a lot easier. Clamp that. Make sure everything, these tabs, are up against the, uh, the material, nice and flush. They got little thumb screws on here. You lock them down. I'm squared up, ready to go. Go ahead, tack it in, Mike. All right, we're good here. On to the next one. Yeah, buddy. We're gonna set these up again for the intermediates. So simple as this. I'm gonna set it up just like that. I'm gonna take my square, put it up on top, and I'm gonna measure down. I want two inches. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go four because I want two inches from here to the bottom of that square too. Remember, this table's upside down. So I'm gonna set this up here, and I'm gonna drop down to four. Okay, clamper there, Mike. Man cub. Can I what's the clamper right there, sir? Yeah. Alright, now I get one of my cross members. Clamp that right there, sir. And now I'm exactly two inches below where I want it to be. All right, so we told you guys earlier we we're going to be dealing with A Bomb 79, kind of doing a collaboration with them. So let's go ahead and give them a call. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Adam, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going pretty good. Just out here in the shop, messing around. What are you up to? Uh, we're actually we're building a grill. We wanted to see if you'd help us out with something. Let me come outside so I can get a better signal, okay? So we're we're building this grill uh, for a guy, Sam, the cooking guy on YouTube, and. Okay. We're trying to put some like finishing touches on it. We got about two days left in the project, and then we're going to be driving out to California to deliver it to him. Um, okay. He just hit a million followers on YouTube, so we were kind of thinking something we could put on this grill to kind of capture that moment. Uh, and we were thinking about like a gold play button and kind of machining it out. And I've, we have no machining experience or equipment here. We were wondering if, uh, if that'd be something you'd be interested in. Man, I think I can help you out with that. That sounds like a, a great collaboration project to uh to work with you and uh and help you get that done that should be no problem we're trying to think uh since we got a, a quick turnaround kind of a last minute decision what could we you know machine it out of um do you have any like a big chunk of brass laying around the shop or anything i know it's short uh, notice i'm not gonna have any brass uh, you know anything that size to build it if we're gonna make it you know similar in size to you know, I've got my silver plate button, so we can kind of copy that. Okay. The gold plate button is about the same size. Um, offhand, I'm not going to have any brass that size, but I do. I should have some aluminum out there. If we can cut it out of a piece of aluminum flat bar, you know, and then just, uh, you know, powder coat it or, or paint it or something like that. I guess powder coat would probably be a better option there. To, uh, right. Make it durable so it won't chip. That's what we're here. We'll show you the grill. Okay. So here's here's kind of what we're thinking. So it's like a Santa Maria style. Oh yeah, cool. With the we got the little flywheels and all that. Yeah. And we're That's thinking nice. we're thinking about putting it right up here. Okay. Kind of as like the the centerpiece that we kind of set up above. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing you know the, like the actual <clears throat> size of the play button that should fit pretty well there. Yeah, it'll be. Is that two inch tubing up there? Yeah, two by two square tubing. Okay, so the play button, I'll have to, I'll have to measure, and it's going to be a little bit wider than that, as far as the, the height goes. So okay. Will that be any issue, you know, if it sticks above or below that bar? No, I think if we go, kind of go just equal distance, um, half above, half below, or, you know, just kind of split it in two, and then maybe mill out yeah. some uh, quarter 20 studs or something, 
that are you know two and a half inches long and then we can cut off the rest we can just through drill it and then mount it right up top bolt it up yeah we can just put a couple holes in the back of it and uh, just like you said just bolts it right to it perfect and then um we're, we're actually passing right through pensacola when uh when we head out to california so we can just swing in and if you're cool with it take a tour of your shop yeah that sounds awesome man that, that's great so uh I'll go ahead and, and get started on it and, uh, and get the thing knocked out and see if we can get it finished up and time it so that whenever you guys come through town, you can stop and we can get it mounted on there. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, we definitely appreciate it, man. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut it off right here. We're actually on our way to deliver the grill to Sam. Go on over to A-Bomb's channel. Uh, you can see episode one of how he builds the play button, so go check that out. Stay tuned for the next episode where we close this whole thing out and show you guys the delivery. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. What do you do? Can't work around here. There they are, standing in a row. What are we doing? <laughs> Can't work around here. There they are, standing in a row. What are we doing? <laughs> big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. You got big balls, I got big balls. Some balls are held for dancing and some for fancy dress, but when they're held for pleasure, they're the balls that I like best. Welcome back to Well.com. Is it in you? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Red beard! Hey! See his f guy. Red beard! He's gotta be nervous. Red beard! <laughs> hey, yo, Hermit the Frog here. I can't do it. Oh, I can't. Oh, you're. I see, I couldn't do it. No, wait, what's his name? Hermit the Frog. Why? Well, how you say it? Hey, hey, Mike. Is it in you? Hey, guys. No, wait. <laughs> hey, old Hermit the Frog here. Wait, who are you doing this now? Hermit the Frog. Huh? Who are you, who's your impression now? Kermit the Frog. Who's your impression now? Hermit the Frog. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of Hermit. How you say it, camera he guy? He didn't come out much. <laughs> he was kind Kermit. of a recluse. Oh, uh, Kermit. He was a little, Hermit the Frog was a little bit of a recluse. My bad, my bad. This is episode four of this awesome, awesome grill cart build. We are building the frame today. Jason's building the sprocket ratchet up here. And he's gonna drill some half inch tubes out so the other tube can slide inside each other. That's about it so far on this episode. Tune back in for the next episode. Thank you, good day.